Hey, family, time for this week's episode of Gonzalo's Place. Our guest is a multiple Grammy, multiple Latin Grammy nominee, multiple winner, and you will learn everything about vocal tuning. But first, on a serious note, we at Pensado's Place stand in solidarity with the Asian American and Pacific Islander community. The insane carnage in Atlanta and random attacks on people are the height of cowardice, hardly a political statement, and certainly a BS response to COVID. Stop doing it. We need to pull together. We're better when we're stronger. There's nobody that you're going to attack that is responsible for a virus. It is just my opinion, but I wanted to share. As an audio community, we know better. We gather and we heal. Thank you for that. On a better note, reminding you, like we did last week, to check out the Isotope Music Production Suite Pro, because it show sure enough is sweet. RX, Nectar, Ozone, 30 plugins, all pro level, free updates and tutorials, EQs, compression, DSPs. Uh, it's everything you need and super affordable. Only 25 bucks a month. You will spend that on beer this weekend. Plus, you get a seven day free trial. You cannot beat this, folks. Go to the link below or to isotope.com and start making hits now. Also, Shout out to Dave. The Master Blaster's birthday was this week, so he turned home with you. Hey, guys. Thanks so much. This means a lot. Wow. <laughs> Hit us on our socials, and you can wish him the same. Like and subscribe as a present. We appreciate when you do that, and Dave will really appreciate it. So, hey, before we introduce the guests, I want to show you something pretty cool. Got this in the mail from the Latin Grammys. Really proud of it. Um, we were honored by them toward the end of the year, both Dave and I. Uh, and because of your support, they honored Pensado's place. And it is very special. This So thank you. We, uh, we so appreciate you. And we've got more coming. Um, our guest has been honored, too, by the Latin Grammys. She is in Miami completely changing the game, a master of vocal tuning, lots of awards. Please enjoy our hang with the petite boss, Natalia Ramirez. Hey. Ooh. My Bye -bye. God. Natalia. <laughs> um, I'm so, so excited to be here. You guys have no idea. Such an honor. <laughs> uh, it, honor it's an honor to have you. We, I hope we didn't feel like stalkers because we were – Chasing Robin down so much, like we have to, have, we have to, have, we have to. Um, no, no, no. I, I actually, I actually felt flattered when when you guys reached out, and then he told me I was like, "Oh wow, things yeah. are getting real," you know. <laughs> no, yeah, no. Listen, the, the the one thing that um, it happens to be Women's Month, but I'm I'm a believer that it's sort of silly to celebrate people just in a month. You should be celebrated around the year. Um, and, um, but we wanted in this particular month to focus on people who are doing some really interesting things and you do a number of interesting things. You've become known for vocal tuning amongst a whole group of folks, Jennifer Lopez mm -hmm. and Mark Anthony and Maluma, just a number of people. How did that come about? What do you do? Why are you that lady? Oh, okay. So everything started when I was very, very young and I started going to, um, taking music, music lessons when I was, I think four years or maybe even like younger, mm -hmm. but then I went and I started studying violin. Mm. So I played the violin until the age of 12, 16 or something like that. It was around that age. Mm. But if you, if you recall, when you go to an orchestra, you are going to hear that the violin is the one in charge of, of giving the tuning of the actual, of the whole orchestra, you know? Yes. And, and it started like that. Then I realized that I didn't want to be a performer, but that I wanted to stay in music because w music was my life. And uh, my oldest brother, he was a, a, in audio engineering school. So, you know, following his path, not really knowing what it was, I was like, you know, I want to be an audio engineer. Cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then I went to school and, you know, it's, it's like this palette of different possibilities of things that you can do over there. And it's, um, and it's great. It's beautiful. And, and, you know, I found that 
that it was nice that I that I was able to apply my music um, knowledge with all this technical side. Mm. Uh, so basically, you know, I met uh, Julio Reyes Copello, which is an amazing, amazing, amazing uh, a record producer and composer. I'm actually at his studio today. Mm -hmm. uh, and he became uh, my mentor, my boss. And he was the one who actually gave me the opportunity to tune for one of his records for the first time because he 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 was like like you know I, I like uh, that you're a musician I like that you're an engineer and you know you have this uh, I'm gonna say <laughs> partial like perfect tuning situation going on because he's he's heard me before like doing things mm -hmm. and um, and that's how it happened and you know I fell in love with the whole process and and like ever since I think it was like 2015. I've been doing doing songs and I don't know if if I make a list it's probably going to be uh, between 500 and 1000 songs already that I've that I've tuned. Wow. Which is crazy, you know, when you think about it it's a lot of songs. <laughs> wow. So yeah, that's how, that's how everything started. Man. Do you have perfect pitch? Oh, I was going to I, I, I think it's I think it's I think it's partial. I don't know. I don't. I'm. I, I'm not gonna call it perfect pitch because that's being a little like you know cocky, and I don't want to sound like that. But, but it's like partial. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. What are some of the biggest uh, problems that you have to deal with? For example, do you approach a Spanish song a little differently than an English-speaking song uh, versus a, a you know a song from Korea or Japan or China? Are, are there different techniques that you use for different genres? I think um, to me personally, everything comes down to the genre itself because it doesn't matter the language if you're dealing with pop is different than if you're dealing with a ballad or if you're dealing with salsa, if you're dealing with, you know, electronic music, like it's, it's completely different. So it, it's, it's mostly about how tight it has to sound because, you, you know, you have like certain... Uh, things that you can do in one or the other because it's part of the genre itself mm -hmm. um and also of course to me it's going to come more natural when i do things in spanish just because you know i have i have uh, i have the language like mm -hmm. <laughs> with me so if i have to correct things that have to do with how a thing sound and add you know a, a consonants vowels like here and there because of maybe i'm going to go to another take and maybe you know put it in there um, if I go, if, if I do something in Japanese, I'm probably not going to have that in English. Of, of course, um, luckily I have, uh, uh some sort of, uh, facility like mm -hmm. thing uh, as well. Um, but to me, everything is going to come down to, uh, the genre mostly. Can you make a, an, an American or an English singer, uh, Trillizars? <laughs> Huh. That was a joke. I mean, I, it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna need a little processing, but maybe. <laughs> Gracias. Yeah. So Gracias. Prevalence with the prevalence of hip hop, is there vocal tuning in rap records? In rap records? You can do it. I mean, I've done it in the past because you know when you have like certain it, because it sounds like 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 you're talking, of course, but then it's gonna have certain tone. So, so yeah, I fixed that. And then also like the breath, maybe you do something like this and then maybe that doesn't go like within the, and then you have to fix it. So it goes with the music. So it's totally doable. I've done it before. So the skill sets involved in tuning, some of them can be with the singer or the rapper or whatever the artist is. And uh -huh. some of them are technical things. What technical things uh, do you utilize? Um, what, what technical things do I utilize? Uh, you're are saying? there plugins? Is there software that you use? Oh, of course, of course. Like, like mostly for for of course. For, so for for tuning, mm -hmm. uh, my preference is auto tune. Mm -hmm. uh, there's you know like this uh, never ending uh, fight about what's better, but but to me, you know, it, the tools are tools. So as long as you can get to whatever you want to go, then you use whatever you you you're familiar with. And to me, auto tune. I love auto tune for everything. Uh, and then I have many other tools that I use to tackle different problems. Uh, not all of them are gonna work for the same singer because um, uh, you know when you when you import that waveform, it, it's gonna act 
completely different on every single one of them. Yeah. But I do love um, using, uh, you know, things like time compression expansion. You know, maybe I want I want like some segment to sound like a little longer or shorter because I want it to fall into like the beat or something. So maybe I can do that. I use um, time shift. Maybe I can EQ something with. Uh, um, I, I love isotope for this and the ozone <laughs> nine. <laughs> mm-hmm. So I love I love that EQ. So so I would go for things um, like that, and they are completely different. Uh, I also use uh, Revoice uh, Pro. Like sometimes when I have a stack of vocals, I would go on and do something with that. Um, so yeah, it, it, there are a lot of different tools. I mean, everything depends on on what I need to do at the yeah. specific moment. Do you ever try to make a song um, have the flow and the, and the, the tempo? That, not tempo, but some, sometimes I get I get I get vocals and they're, and they're just so so ahead of the track. It 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 it, it just makes you uncomfortable. Do you ever mm-hmm. do you ever do uh, techniques or have techniques that allow you to move the vocals around? Of course, yeah, the, I I notch I notch to the left or the right, like depending on on what I want. And there's this uh, very uh, nice technique that I that I learned actually from Julio, and and I've noticed that if you if you don't start like your phrases and everything like on tempo right like on the beat, mm-hmm. is gonna make it sound even more, yeah, like like expressive. So so I usually go for that. So if you see my waveform and then you see like the starting of a of a of a chorus or something like that, you're gonna see that it's not gonna fall exactly, but then you're gonna notch it a little to the to the left, to a, to the right. I mean, so it sounds more like it, it it adds like a very cool effect when you do it like that. But of course, I notch a lot. Like it's part of the of the tuning process. And, and how do you deal with um, with S's and T's? Because I notice a lot of people will tune something, but the S's and T's don't follow the tuning quite right. You go mm-hmm. in and, and handle the S and T's different in your tuning operation. Yes, so so um, I I can mostly replace those. So oh, when right. when I'm given a, a track, I usually ask for all the takes before the comp. Mm-hmm. That way, I can have like different tools, so I can replace here and there. And if things don't work, uh, maybe I can I can you know use the S's and and other things like that. Um, but uh, and you can actually tune those two if you wanted to. So that depends on where they are yeah. placed. Are you working and, in Pro I work uh, in Pro Tools. Yeah. I'm, I'm curious, why is it that you don't ever really uh, work with the key of the song? You like to not know the key. I don't know why, but to me, like sometimes when you're recording certain instruments, they are not in perfect pitch. So mm-hmm. when I go and tackle the vocal and I go against, you know, that uh, piano, the guitar or whatever, and I go and I set up like a key uh, in my tool, that means it's going to be locked to that key, even though maybe the piano is not in the key anymore. Oh, I see, so I, see. I don't I don't do a key and I use my my ear instead. So it follows the instrument. Perfect. Yeah, mm-hmm. it makes sense. Makes sense. So you have hit that place in your career where you recognize Latin Grammys, Grammys, Billboard, Latin, uh, Mm. Latin American Music Awards, uh, Billboard placements, hit songs. And I've always found we're actually taping this the day after the Grammys aired, which by the way, I thought was absolutely fabulous. Um, Right. (laughs) Yeah, I thought it was fantastic. I spoke to Harvey Mason Jr. this morning and congratulated him. They, They absolutely slayed it. Um, but what a lot of people don't know who who have not gotten to that point in their career is that mm-hmm. brings added scrutiny and pressure and other things to perform. Like it's great to be honored by your peers, and uh-huh. now there's an expectation when they hire you that you're just going to be amazing. Do you process that that way, or do you just say I'm celebrating, I'm happy, and I keep going? Some people handle it better than others. How have you handled uh-huh. it? I think I celebrate and keep going because, you know, I feel that I'm every day walking on my dream. Mm-hmm. I didn't think I'm only 31 years old. And this is the things that I have accomplished so far, you know, and, and then and then I'm there. I feel really, really like humble. You're 31. At 31, I think I was still delivering 
pizza to a studio. I, I don't. <laughs> Uh, I don't know where I was doing 31. I, I can't remember that far back. Um, 31, I was still offering people fries with that shake. <laughs> you see, so when you when you think about it, yeah, like some sometimes it can be it can be a lot of it can be pressure, but but that depends on how you take it. I mean, you you do you do what you do. You follow your intuition, and and it's not gonna be like everyone is. Maybe not everyone is gonna like that. Yeah, but but you do what you do, and people know that that's what you do. So when they hire you, they know that what what you are supposed to deliver. Which is exactly the healthy way to process that. I I always believe that you have to have something you stand for and that you represent, and you then control how much you modify that or not. But at least going in, <clears throat> I know if I'm going to hire Nat, I know what I'm going to get. <clears throat> I know how to work with that, and then you get to know the client. As well, okay. as as of as somebody who does, I mean, because you do a lot of things. We're going to get to that too. <clears throat> I thought I did a lot of things. My God, I'm exhausted. <laughs> what all you do? Um, are you also on the other end learning from the artists that you're vocal tuning? Dude? Yes. Is that right? Give us some of the lessons that you've learned from some folks. From uh, what thing in particular? Whatever. I mean, it could be Julio. It could be Jennifer. It could be. You know, because there's got to be information coming back to you that's helping you uh -huh. make your decisions. Of course. So, of course, it's very, like, in, in my role, it's very, very important to um, keep in touch, to, to follow what the producer wants. You know, in, in, in that particular sense, um, it's like, it, like their art. And, you know, the art is craft. It's like their it's like their their, baby. their thing is their baby is what they want to what they want to release to their world. So you know you have to be very careful because you're dealing with the, these artistic personalities that that expect like everyone else that are vulnerable. They are like just trying to do their best. So you have to treat their vocal like that. So to me, it's like very important to to deal with that and to listen to the producer and their and their instructions like sometimes they don't want you to touch too much and sometimes they want you to overdo it you know in yeah. my case um and because of because of my style and the things that i've learned like if you go and listen to my records you're gonna see that they are gonna sound as natural as they can possibly be so yeah. you're not gonna hear the artifacts of the auto-tune or the processing like it's, it's mostly gonna sound like if the person was actually singing in perfect pitch and then they are very expressive and that and when people again when people come to me they um they are looking for that usually yeah. like they want they want it to sound natural so it's very important to communicate with the producer the entire time like is this what you want um i already sent you some stuff please let me know your feedback and then that feed feedback is is absolutely important because it's gonna affect what the what the artist thinks mm -hmm. and sometimes they think that it's too tuned so then you have to go back and relax it a little bit mm -hmm. you know it's, it's like a lot of communication here and there because you're dealing with that personality with that with that artistry with their baby as you were saying before so it's i think it's like really important makes sense i've always mm -hmm. felt like the like the emotion in a in a vocal performance was in the uh was in the mistakes not, not mistakes is the wrong word, but 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 perfect pitch all the way through a song is kind of boring. But mm -hmm. uh, I work with Mary J a lot, uh, Mary J Bosch, and uh, you can't tune her uh, unless you kind of know her because she'll hit she'll hit some of those blues notes, you know, and 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 they'll they'll they'll, they'll be out of tune, but they're not they're not out of the question because that's where the that's where the emotion can be. Dissonance sometimes is emotion in, in, by the brain and in, 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 in the way the brain thinks. And um, uh, unfortunately, I, I, there was a, there was another artist. I'm not going to name who, but uh, real famous producer. Uh, before it got to me, it was it was tuned, and so I got the blame for that. Lost the gig, and um, uh, and he was right. You know, I I. I, I uh, uh, but I, I just have this feeling sometimes that the, like you're a pro, you know what you're doing, but for the audience that's trying to get good at this, 
Don't make everything perfect. Don't feel mm-hmm. like you have to correct everything. Listen to that particular segment. And if you feel something, leave it. That's all that needs to happen, right? I agree. And that, that, that goes back to the question that you were uh, uh, making before about like like what do you do like what is it about and and to me it comes down to a genre again like you have to respect what the rules are and the emotion is Mm -hmm. like if you go to like a tuna i tuna record for um alejandro sanz yeah um it's actually like a like a a grammy winning uh record um and it's amazing and it's about that if you go to alejandro sanz it's not perfect Mm -hmm. like it's just some little detail details here and there he Mm -hmm. didn't want it to be perfect Mm-hmm. And because it, because it's like his his thing, and he has these these Spanish uh, melodies that all go like and, and that can be like a little out of you know the melody, but they are part of the style, and you have to respect that. I was mixing a Chinese record, and I I inadvertently de-essed the vocal a tiny amount, and the mix got rejected, and they said Ooh. the difference between and. It makes it two different words. Exactly. The, 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 and, and, that, yeah. and, that, and that goes to the other thing. Like, like if I if I yeah. if I was to do like a Japanese record, I wouldn't I wouldn't know like yeah. I wouldn't do it the same way, you know, because you don't yeah. wanna you don't wanna deal with that. Then you just, you just do the best. But you I can so exactly you do the best as you can. You follow your intuition, and then yeah, some people are gonna like it, some people are not, and then you have to be cool <laughs> with it. Is is your is your thing? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, I also, think, I also think that the part of the headline and takeaway for the audience is you can't, you have to rely on something internal, your ear, your gut, something that hits you. It's not going to show up on a meter. Yeah, that thing that is, that is there. That magic thing. Mm-hmm. And I don't know that there's enough emphasis put on people who are coming up on developing that side as well, too, because mm-hmm. they both inform you and the greats tend to understand that they have to leave room for that. They have to be able to hear it. They have to be able to be moved by it. That passion is important. And and sometimes I worry, and we talk to teachers a lot, and you work at a place that teaches uh, audio, you know, the, um, at at the art house, the um, Abbey Road Institute, Um, you know, students who get that um, are well on their way to being more well-rounded than mm-hmm. just people who are one or the other. There, there's a combination of both that needs, particularly with so much technology coming at us. You know, there's so many tools. So, so guys, just as you listen to this, know that your ear and your your gut and your heart and things that move you really do count and they can inform stuff and can make the difference between something special and something not special. So, you, you know, mm-hmm. you got to stay open to that kind of stuff. Now, now let's get to, to why you're the petite boss. <laughs> you have more jobs than I think you're the whole manager of the art house. Um, you do some marketing stuff at Sony. You teach and do stuff at at, um, at Abbey Road, which is at the art house. You work and help our friend Robin at Leapwing. Um, how many years before before you are the chairman of all the music business? Is it like another? <laughs> Another three or four years. <laughs> you know, I hope it's not too far. I'm <laughs> kidding. I'm <Good>. not... <laughs> yeah, you know, no, it's a, you know, it's a thing. I like I like multitasking, and and I feel it's very important to do a little bit of um, everything because that gives me the perspective from from every single angle. And to yeah. me, you know, I've been a performer with the violin. Then I I'm an audio engineer because of this. Then I was a studio manager for our house. Then I moved to Sony and I'm doing marketing. Then I'm working with my friend who owns a, a plugin company. And, you know, I help him with administrative stuff. And maybe we go to the NAMM show and then we, you know, we do the pamphlets over there. And we talk a little bit about the plugin. It's really cool. And then wow. a little bit of everything, I think. I, and I think it's very, it's very important to understand. Mm. It is so hard, you know, to judge. Like every, every single one of us is going under, is under a lot of, pressure the entire time because every role is so hard that's right and we yeah that's important the, to understand each other <laughs> the owner of a of the dallas mavericks basketball team mark cuban mm-hmm. says the only thing you can control is your effort yeah but you can control i your, love that absolutely and you're defined mm-hmm. by 
by that. So I, I can tell you as a fellow multitasker that the more you know, the more you do, the more you're going to be ready when that window opens, the more you walk in and kill it. I, I, I'm a firm believer and a recipient of that, that approach. And uh, so I admire, I, I, I think it's amazing. amazing. Uh, thank you so much. And I also think it's inspiring for men and women to watch and see that, um, forget about gender, this is about being a badass. <laughs> no, this is, this is about, about, I think about following your dream. Mm -hmm. And the dream is not going to be perfect. And then you don't want to be a lawyer and you're going to be, you're going to be working at the office that you want tomorrow. Yep. You have to, to do like the different things. And to me, it's been, that's been the key. Mm -hmm. And that's how I met Julio. It wasn't even because of my audio engineering skills. I was literally serving serving coffee for everyone in a um, during a recording session for an album. Wow, that was it. Wow, wow. Tell us what's special about the school. About the uh, Abbey Road Institute. Yeah. You're saying and our house academy. Okay, so it's really it's really cool because it's not only about the technical side. So. Here in Miami, we're going to have two different programs. So there's going to be the technical program that is going to go directly for um, engineers and producers. Mm -hmm. And then there's this other side where you're going to be able to um, um, learn like how to be, you know, a, a singer, a songwriter, but in the real world. So the cool thing is that you're going to have the entire like network of the music industry within the two programs. Wow. So everyone gets to gets to be together. So it's not just like one separate thing, mm -hmm. but then you are actually like doing your your album or your record like alongside people that are um, working on the different um, angles. Fantastic! Fantastic! Yeah. Shout out to Julio. And you know, it's under it, it's under Julio's umbrella, so everything is gonna be fine. The studio is beautiful. Is located. Beautiful. Like in such a beautiful place, it's yep. going to be surrounded by real artists, real people that are current in the industry. Mm -hmm. You don't get to see that every day. No, and shout out to Robin Rulers, our boy. <laughs> hey, Robin. Yeah, no, and Ro Robin is amazing. He's amazing. He really He's amazing. He really is amazing. Absolutely. Absolutely. So you said, um, uh, Natalia, you said that, um, that you've learned how to deal with rejection. Um, I need some massive help in that area. Uh, I'm not real good with that. Can you give me some some pointers? Dealing with rejection, you know, is is just like, like luckily I've been surrounded by people who have always helped me to be better. But of course, I've had the comments of, oh, she has the job because she's beautiful, or she has the job because of that, or you know, she's just nice to people, so that's how she gets things. It's not. It was. It was never because of because of the talent, you know. Mm -hmm. And I've got that like many times growing up. I'm pretty sure that there are people who, who maybe are, are jealous about what you do and your accomplishments and everything. And they get to, to say these things about you. But luckily, like I know how to protect myself and I'm surrounded by the right people who are always encouraging, encouraging me to be better. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's just, it's just part of, of, of being um, a lady in such a, you know, I'm going to say it like this. It's not that I'm a feminist or anything like that, but in a male, uh, you know, absolutely <laughs> industry. It is what it is. It is what it is. And it's important to, you know, as in some of the talks we give or even that we give individually, I'm always telling people don't, don't come in this. If you're, you're going to have elbows thrown at you and you have to learn how to handle it. And you don't always mm -hmm. handle it with force. Sometimes you handle it with sophistication and sometimes you deflect and there's other things that you, You have to learn part of that because part this game is always this way, no matter where e you are. Exactly, exactly. A absolutely, and 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 frankly, a sophisticated game will throw off because it's male dominated, but it's dominated by kind of a lot of um, men from the 1860s. Yeah, and, and you can sophisticate your way right through that, and and uh, and being good at what you do is even better. So that's also headlines for anybody watching this. That's It's going to come at you and you got to learn how to handle it because nobody wants to be around somebody who doesn't mm -hmm. know how to how to do it properly. And now decisions are being made fast. Budgets are different. Like um, so anyways, it's, a, it's just a place to go now yeah. with, um, with all your technical skills. This game we have called batter's box where oh my God. <laughs> we throw something at you and you throw it back and 
Feel free to okay. come back. You need, you'll, you'll, you'll have fun. It's going to be great. Um, are you a sports fan at all? Do you like sports? I no. I do indoor cycling. That's my whole thing. And I'm okay. obsessed with that. Yeah. My, but, uh, but sports in general, like football, soccer, uh, oh. baseball. No, not really. Never. My cousin was an Olympic indoor cyclist. We'll talk about that Ooh, another time. No way. Was, he was amazing. I didn't know. I didn't know that was a thing. I want to be that. <laughs> was amazing. I can do that well, with all the other stuff you do. Uh, exactly. <laughs> Why right, not? Babe, let's tee up batter's box. Natalia, okay. she's going to she's gonna knock it out. I can tell. Okay. Uh, uh, Rapa Vieja. Huh. I'm a vegetarian. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just arepa. Kidding. Arepa. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, uh, compression. How does that affect? Uh, con control. Nice. Sonky. Uh, sonky, perfection. BPM or tempo? Uh, um, pace? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we said genre, but, uh, give me another answer for genre. Huh. Uh, Flow. Okay. Melodies. Birds. Preamps. Preamps. Um, control, too. I don't know. It's. Yeah. Saturation. Saturation would be noise. What's your favorite expensive mic? My favorite expensive mic. So I'm going to go for the Sony, for the C800. Yeah, I wish they still made it. Okay, <laughs> I, I give up. You, 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 you won it. Um, um, yep, that's it. Good job. Oh. <laughs> it's like to, you know, it was supposed to be a word, right? Just like that. No, you did great. Beautifully and perfectly. I wasn't because because I don't I don't know. I don't know if it was an explanation because you were trying to ask me and I was like, should I come up with a word or a phrase? I don't know. <laughs> you did I, either can do, you but you did you did great. Um uh, okay. and see that's that's one of those things like a song. Sometimes it has imperfections, but they but you keep them in because it's good. Exactly. No, and as and as you can see, as I was telling you before. <clears throat> I get I get nervous like really easily, uh -huh. like it's, it's normally my personality. And then I'm too straightforward, so I just think about things that are very practical. So it's my it's part of my personality, and you know that's who I'm. Who I am. Well, <laughs> you're on with two people whose personality quirks are too too long to list. So <laughs> me, the normal one, <laughs> we're the ones that are that are off putting. The um um. In one of the one of the things that I'm seeing more and more before we wrap up is mm -hmm. uh, incredible talent like yourselves are more and more interested in educating, in sharing with people. Are you, are you one of those types as well? I think so. I think so, and it's because you know I went to to a university that that I really liked, like mm -hmm. the way things were. Mm -hmm. But I, I agree that in education in general, you don't get a sense of the real world. So yeah. you, when you are, when you're out of there, you're, you feel lost. So to me, like part of my path and this whole thing with Abbey Road Institute and the Art House Academy is actually to get those students actually like down to earth. Mm -hmm. Like this is what you're going to deal with. This is the reality of things. And this is how we tackle those problems. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's really important. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. If you were to wrap up today's show to the audience that's out there, and not to make you nervous, but it's, you know, probably 180 some odd countries and all kinds of things who are <laughs> to your wise words, what would your advice be to them? What would be your perspective? Trust your gut, follow your intuition, be yourself, uh, and be confident of what, of what you have to offer. Mm -hmm. it's really really important and never stop trying mm, that is that would be it that is fantastic stuff um before dave wraps us up i just have to tell you that uh it's folks like yourself that inspire people that make people believe that they can um we're lucky in that you know as long as we've been doing it we hear it each week from either our guests or from the audience and you have no idea how impactful being able to hear from you, learn from you, 
see how human you are, see what you like when you're nervous, all this mm. stuff. That, <laughs> that means that other person out there who feels that way knows that there's a path forward. Um, love your talent, love your contributions. Um, please use Pensado's Place anytime you want as a platform. We, we, we absolutely love what you do. Hi, Herb. Thank you so much. Such Dave, kind Apple words. Sun. I feel very honored. Thank you so much. No, we're honored. Dave, take us home. Well, uh, guys, we're all part of a creative community over here in this in this wonderful thing we call music. And, and uh, uh, the inclusion and the amount of people from different countries and, and different ethnicities is, 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 gonna, is making this one of my favorite professions on earth. Uh, we, we are all individual and we have an individual identity and I promise you there's room for all of us and there's, there's room for everybody to make money right now. So we'll see you, bye-bye.